What's up guys, Spencer here from the editing room. Just a heads up, this episode goes a little off the rails sometimes. Our goal with this episode series is to make super streamlined first time reaction content for the Cosmere. Uh, this time we had an awesome guest on who is very knowledgeable about the Cosmere as a whole. And we got a little carried away with the greater Cosmere connections. Um, and you'll see exactly what I mean by that in a moment. In the future, these episodes will be a little bit more focused on the book at hand and a little more fast paced and cohesive. But regardless, I hope that you enjoy our first episode of Into the Cosmere. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Fantasy Files podcast, where we talk about our favorite fantasy series and topics. I am your more dashing and debonair co-host, Spencer. Uh, next up, his parents refuse to pay his ransom. It's Gabe, your second co-host. <laughs> we are joined by this week's Cosmere Sherpa and co-host of the World Hoppers podcast, Cheyenne. Hey, Cheyenne. Hello. It's really well, nice to be here. Yes, we're so happy to have you. Uh, we'll introduce her more in just a minute. But first, what are we doing here today, Gabe? Well, I'm glad you asked, Spencer. So today... <laughs> We are talking about Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson, Pro Seeker Project number one. That's right. To kick off our first recorded episode of 2023, we are starting our Into the Cosmere series, where we start our journey into the rest of Sanderson's Cosmere works. Now, in the new year, we're changing some of the structure of our podcast, including hopefully shorter intros for you guys. <laughs> Uh, but I feel like I do need to explain real quick what exactly we're doing with this series of episodes. So as you know, most of you who have followed the podcast for a while, you know that we've read all of Mistborn Era 1 and Era 2. We have episodes for all of those on our podcast. Technically, those should be part of the Into the Cosmere series, but I'm just going to leave them how they are. They're there for you. We did full deep dives on the whole series, um, so enjoy those if you would like. This series is meant for us to get to Stormlight Archive, which is a major goal of our podcast in 2023. I would imagine that we'll probably be getting there, starting it sometime in the spring, we were planning on starting with Elantris and Warbreaker, um, and then maybe doing some of the short stories that are relevant to those, and then going into Stormlight. But then Secret Project 1 came out that I totally forgot about. I totally <laughs> forgot I'd even signed up for the Kickstarter. Um, and so when it arrived in my email, I was like, oh yeah, that's the thing. Um, so then I reached out to Twitter and everyone was like, yes, you can totally read it without having read uh, Stormlight or any of the other Cosmere stuff. So that's where we're beginning. Uh, Cheyenne even says it's a great place to start in the it, Cosmere. It really is. Nice. So uh, we're super happy to start here. Um, but yeah, just join us on our journey through the Cosmere. These will be our very first reactions to everything. Um, so that, that being said, spoilers are going to be weird. I'll be honest, because yes. technically, technically for this series, we are spoiling or we are, we are spoiling <laughs> <laughs> all of the Cosmere, but we can't spoil things we haven't read yet. So everything is on the table, but they're just maybe things that we don't know. And so we can't really spoil. So uh, you know, I've read Elantris and Warbreaker. Uh, Gabe has read Warbreaker. Uh, we've both read, obviously, the entire Mistborn series. So all of that is on the table uh, for spoiling. Um, I'll try to take it light on Elantris story spoilers, just because I want Gabe mm -hmm. to experience mm -hmm. that okay. story. <clears throat> but um, but yeah, I think uh, I think this is going to be a ton of fun. And uh, I hope you guys have fun on our, jo our journey through <laughs> the Cosmere. <laughs> so that's the game plan for today. If you're a new subscriber to the channel, thank you so much for subscribing. And we hope 
that we can bring you some excellent content in 2023. If you're not subscribed yet, then consider destroying those like and subscribe buttons on YouTube so that you can keep up with everything we do here. We also have a Discord and Twitter linked below in the description. And with all that out of the way, let's introduce Cheyenne and her podcast and talk about what we've been reading lately. So Cheyenne, first of all, thank you so yes. much for joining us. You're this, I know that this was... Uh, this was very last minute. It was honestly uh, something I kind of thought of last minute. And you came highly recommended by the uh, Fantasy for the Ages podcast. Oh. They were like, they were like, oh, reach out to World Hoppers. They they really know their stuff. Yeah, Zach and Jim are great. We yes. were on with them last year. Well, not oh, last cool. year, two years ago uh, for uh, the Wada Holiday stream mm. we do for the Light Fever Foundation. Nice. So you're really into Wheel of Time then? Yes. <laughs> I've, been, <laughs> I've been, I dropped off a lot because I've been so busy with Cosmere things. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. So uh, as for who am I, uh, I'm Jen. I'm one of the co-hosts of the World Hoppers podcast. Our focus is on like helping new readers like because the Cosmere it can be super intimidating. Yeah. And so we want to have the double thing of like, well, discussion for longtime fans, but also um, new readers who have don't know anything about the Cosmere and like try to make it less intimidating, okay. particularly in comparison to places like the 17th Shard. Like, yeah. I remember uh, the first time I tried listening to a Shardcast episode. It was the Dawn Shard episode. Of, out of all the episodes I could have started with, it was the Dawn Shard episode. And even though I had already read everything, I was still super overwhelmed. And I'm like, no, I'm going to table shortcast for the moment. Yeah. And like Words of Brandon, um, the um, Sen the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmic Studies okay. uh, helped me get into it and a lot of things. And then I came back, listened to all of shortcast and nowadays... I'm also part of the staff at the 17th Shard, and so you'll see me on oh, Shardcast cool. once in a while. Oh, wow. Awesome. Cool. So so does your podcast, uh, do you guys go book by book, or do you go by topics, or what do you do there? Yeah, so we've done, like, book by book, uh, non-spoiler, spoiler. It's going to get a little bit more confusing the more we go on, and we're going to try to do, like, sections within the same episode. Right. We just finished... Uh, uh, Miss Born Era 2, actually working on editing Lost Metal. Now it's a super okay, nice. editing episode because it was like three hours long. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, so is ours. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like Ilana normally does our editing. This is the first time I've edited something. Okay. Um, so it's taking a while. Yeah. And we've had special guests, um, like some of our friends from the Discord. We've had uh, Rob and Drew from the Inking Out Loud podcast on. Oh, also. cool. Wow. Great recommendation. Nice. Um, I, I, I love the podcast, so I, I yeah. will always take any chance to plug it. Yeah, for um, sure. And for Lost Metal, we had Evgeny uh, Arjun from the 17th Shard on. Oh, wow. That's so, cool. Yeah, you guys have had a lot of lot of cool people yeah. on there. And uh, do you... Do yeah, you Stormlight is coming up this year, other than the Secret Project. We recorded all of those like over a year ago. Well, oh. Way of Kings, we have a gap for Words of Rains, but we have most of that backlog recorded already. Wow, okay. Nice. <laughs> Do you guys spoil future books? Like, could a new reader listen to your episodes as they oh, read? Oh, yeah, they and totally could. And that's the whole point. Oh, okay, we have cool. spoiler episodes and non-spoiler episodes. And for the ones where we do, like, spoilers and non-spoilers in the same episode, like, we'll give a warning. It's like, okay, now we're going into Cosmere stuff. Okay, So, for cool. example, uh, the um, uh, Skadriel essay and short story in Arcanum Unbounded we did the first part of that, no spoilers, just like Mistborn spoilers, well, obviously, um, right. 301, okay. with a friend of ours and guest on the Stormlight episodes eventually when they come out. And then the second half of that, we did full spoilers. And so cool. I mean, the whole point is that it's not as intimidating that you don't need to have read everything and know all the wops and the copper mine and everything. Okay, so, that's, that's very cool. That'll be super helpful to us as we kind of go through the Cosmere here, I'm definitely going to check out uh, your guys' podcast so I can learn some new stuff. Um, it's crazy hearing hearing you, Cheyenne, talk about, it just gives me a scope of like how freaking huge it's, 
yeah the cosmere is it's big. yeah massive it's just it's kind of wild to hear you talk about it because like it's, you know people have told me like it's big right like it's yeah. huge but then like hearing the different directions it goes is just mm -hmm. just wild yeah and that's I've... just canon stuff you yeah. have like all the words of Brandon, and I don't know how many there are logged on Arcanum, but there's a lot of them, and people can yeah. talk to them. And we do WAB episodes in Shardcast. Then you have unpublished things like Ether of Night, which we'll definitely bring up today. Yeah. And Wave King's Prime, and all these things. That's ancillary cool. too. And then you have fan theories that get so uh so common. I wish I could have an example, but there's no right <laughs> things. Yeah. So I don't want to spoil you. Yeah. And going back to what you said, Gabe, I, I think I, I've heard the Cosmere described as like the fantasy MCU mm. where where there's all these different yeah. parts branches. And, and then and then there's the Avengers that kind of covers everything and it kind of makes all those things connect. Yeah. Um, and so I've I've been super eager to to get into the Cosmere. And for a while, I was like. There was just so much other stuff that I was reading where I was like, I'll get to it eventually. Like, I'm not like, I, I was excited, but I'm like, I'm not super like eager to get there. After reading Tress and then going through uh, that Bookborn video that you and I watched, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm starting to dig all the little connections yeah. and all the, all the little things that mm -hmm. are just like little Easter eggs and I was like, I could really, really get into this. Like, I, I think that this is going to be one of those things where, you know, I read it and then I reread it over and over and kind of start to get all the connections. Really benefits from yeah. reread. Yeah. Cause like, that's, that's what I love doing with, uh, like our, our three things that we do that with here are like, uh, King Killer, Dresden Files and King's Dark Tidings. And we've gone back and reread those a bunch of times to catch all the little easter eggs and connections and it, it seems like brandon is is doing something really cool here where he's uh mm -hmm. kind of connecting all these things so yeah i'm super excited to get into this uh where can people follow you cheyenne as far as like the podcast where can they do you guys have so, a twitter yeah we have twitter instagram reddit though we barely i to be perfectly honest the only reason I use Reddit and the reason I use the podcast Reddit instead of just a personal account is to post uh, questions for Brandon's streams. Oh, okay. Oh. Nice. And so most of those questions where they say World Topics Podcast, it's going to be me. And okay. Not all for um, Ilana, but Reddit is a whole rabbit hole I don't want to get into. It, so I just use that for the streams. Um, nice. And we have our Discord server and like all the, we have a non spoiler section. I mean, a tagged spoilers only section where every absolutely everything has to be tagged. And yeah. then a section where, I mean, they're all named for the worlds that um, each story takes place on. And so you don't have to tag anything for those worlds, but you do have to tag connections and other stuff. And then you, we have um, the full spoilers channel where everything is fair game, except unpublished stuff, but nobody ever reads unpublished stuff except like me. <laughs> right. And oh. funny sweet so, yeah. awesome well uh listeners or viewers wherever you're watching us or listening to us uh go check them out there uh if you're a cosmere fan it sounds like a fantastic podcast to get into uh let's move in real briefly to what we've been reading lately um we're gonna try to make this segment a little quicker than it has been in the past and i know I know that I am the culprit. I know <laughs> I'm, I am the one that goes on too long. So what I'm really saying is I am going to try to be brief. Uh, but Gabe, so obviously we've, we've all read Tress of the Emerald Sea. Mm -hmm. What else have you read recently, Gabe? So I I was doing a couple rereads of just what you said. Like I, I listened to Changes, um, Dresden Files and mm -hmm. one other one and then I also started the Heroic Age trilogy that I think Mick sent us that right as yeah. a gift yeah, yeah, yeah so so I finished book one and loved oh, really? it yeah really? oh. yes loved it and I'm on book two and they're the they, they're not like they're chronological but they're separate stories with the same characters so it's like you know okay. book one's like kind of a standalone in a sense and then I'm only like maybe a couple hours into book two but I really like it so far I think you would love it um, okay you would like it a lot and so i'm excited to to finish that and read the third one too 
Oh, dude, I, yeah. I can't even. I can't it's even. Super, tell you it's super. It's how it's happy very it like anime Japanese. Have you? Have you? You haven't read it, have you? I I started it a little bit. Okay. But I, yeah. I didn't get haven't that far. even heard of it actually. Yeah, it's, it's by it's by Rob uh, J Hayes, and and it's kind mm. of a. It's it's hard to here. Let me. I can just read the thing here. It's that one. Have you ever, have you seen the book like Never Die, uh, no. advertised on Twitter? Okay, it's it's very. I'm not really like, on Twitter all that much, honestly. Oh, okay, it's uh it's very Asian inspired. Yeah, which which I love. There's like uh like yokai like Japanese ghosts. Shinigami, stuff, gods of death, Shinigami, and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's really it though. That's for anything new that I've read. That's that's been it. Uh, it's okay. just that that trilogy. Sweet. Uh, yeah. che- Cheyenne, have you been reading uh, anything lately? So, okay, so Lost Metal and Trust kind of, first Lost Metal and then Trust kind of sent me into a reading club. It happens to me after yeah. Nish Anderson books. It happened after Rhythm of War and it happened again. So I've, I reread uh, The King Chronicles and Magnus Chase. But technically, what I really should be reading before I go back to university should be Gene Wolfe's Club the Conciliator, the second book in the Book of the New Sun. Oh, and okay. also, because my mom wants me to read it, and we kind of met a bit that I didn't finish it before the end of the year, uh, The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. Okay. But nice. yeah, I'm really excited to get back into Club the Conciliator, but it's just so dense and so mm-hmm. much information. It needs a lot of attention. Yeah. Um, because it's Gene Wolf. Yeah. It's always going to need a lot of attention. So That's... I hope I can finish that book before I go back into university. And For sure. when I do, um, I'm uh, studying literature. So I awesome. kind of have an idea of what I'm going to be reading over the next semester. Lots of Russian literature. Um, okay. Spanish medieval things. Cool. Um, nice. It's, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, that's uh, that's what our third co-host Chris was saying about because he read the uh, the first book in Book of the New Sun, and uh, he was like, "Yeah, it's it's really dense. There's yeah. a lot that mm-hmm. you have to kind of just like get through." Uh, he's like, "There's a lot of like heavy vocabulary of like words. You need that a you dictionary. Have, yeah, you have side. to look up. Yeah." Um, so it doesn't sound like anything that I would be particularly interested in, but I definitely, uh, you know, I definitely, you know, happy for the people that, that really enjoy it. Cause it sounds like there's a lot to dig into there. Yeah, there really is. It's an incredible series, but it also needs lots of attention and, and like, you know, like I started it back when IOL was covering yeah. the first book, but, uh, Rob left uh, for the Air Force, and so they put a pause on that. And so now I'm just like listening to the Alzabos episodes for the first episode for the first book. Yeah, and then I'll pick up um, with Closet Conciliator again. Nice. Let's see. What have I been reading? So I've I've gone into a little bit of a slump myself mm-hmm. after Tress because you know, spoiler alert, I like loved this book. Like I I loved it so much. And now that it's over, I'm like, I don't know what to read. I <laughs> legitimately don't, I don't know what to read. Like I have, I've tried like three or four different things and nothing has like really stuck for me. I think I'm going to completely, you know, in this next week or so, I'm going to change it up with, um, I might try the, uh, the first law trilogy again. I might try the blade itself. Um, but before I had read Tress, I had read um, Stormfront and Turncoat because I had I had just okay, got. Okay, that's an interesting combination in Dresden books. Yeah, yeah, because I I read the first one and I was like, oh, like every time I read the first one, it just gets like better and better. Like I appreciate it more and more the more times I I reread. And, but then after I finished it, I was like, okay, I don't know what to go on to next. I kind of want to read a book that's later in the series. And so then I went on to, uh, then I went on to Turncoat and I was like, oh, that's such a good, (laughs) such a good part of the Dresden Files. I love that one so much. Um, Because, yeah, I had just gotten back from like vacation and we didn't really have anything major planned for the podcast until this week. And so I was like, all right, I just need, I just need something that's like familiar and easy to get through. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and so I, I just read those and I have no idea what I'm going to read next. Um, but hopefully it'll be something good. All right. So we are going to go into our kind of spoiler talk for uh, Tress of the Emerald Sea. We've made some changes to the structure of the podcast. As most of you remember, we had like seven different segments for the podcast and I would put them all in like the chapters. We'd go through bit by bit. And what I started to notice was that people were clicking off the video or off the podcast by the time we got to our like favorite moments. And I don't know. I, I think that that's like the best part of the podcast is when we get to our favorite moments and we just get to like gush about what we liked about the book. Um, so we're kind of uh, smushing some of those sections together, uh, making them a little bit shorter we're keeping the initial impressions, uh, just kind of our general discussion of the uh, of that format, um, and then we're going directly into favorite moments and quotes, and we're kind of making those one thing because I feel like whenever we would talk about our favorite quotes, we'd also be talking about our favorite moments in the same vein. And it, it, it was just like almost the same thing. So we made those one thing uh, and we kind of, you know, dialed that in a little bit. And then after that, we have any interesting world building stuff. And obviously this won't be applicable for every episode, uh, but we have world building stuff uh, that we'll talk about. And then we're going to go from there into final thoughts and theories. And we kind of made that one thing. Um, so hopefully that should streamline our episodes a little bit more, make them a little bit shorter, hopefully, uh, just so that we're not, cause it was that, you know, we talk about the same thing in favorite moments that we did in favorite quotes. Yeah. Um, and so hopefully this will kind of make it all streamlined together. And as we go throughout the year, we're going to tweak this format. We're going to change it. And hopefully as we get to, the end of the summer, we will have a rock solid format for every episode going forward because we want to make this podcast like as easy to listen to and as streamlined as possible. Um, you know, uh, clicks and views and subscribers isn't the whole goal here at Fantasy Files. We do this because we love to talk about books, uh, but we all also want to make this fun for you. Uh, the listener. So um, I hope you guys like this new format. If you do, let us know. And with that being said, this is your spoiler warning in three, two, one. You've been warned. All right, guys, what did you think about Tress of the Emerald Sea? Starting with Gabe. I, I liked it a lot. I, I love the story. I, I was a little, and I texted Spencer this too. I got a little confused with the narration and a couple of the jumping, you know, it was actually Hoyd that was doing it, but I also thought it was Triss. And so the first like maybe hour I was confused. Then I got it cleared up. As far um, as like who was narrating. Yeah. And, but I think that confused, like that fact can confuse more of it, I guess, because yeah. of that. Does that make any sense? Yeah. yeah. Like it was hard to follow. Cause I was trying to think it, like, cause is this is Hoyd or like, is Triss doing this or is Hoyd doing this? Right. I, it's I not figured it out. Brandon's usual third person limited. Yeah. Yeah. This is very different than how he's written most of his other okay. books. Cause, mm -hmm. cause obviously like Mistborn, it was just like, like a top down look at all the characters. Yeah. Like this character is doing this, this character yep. is doing this. And in this case, we have someone opening up a storybook and reading it to us. Yeah. And yeah. so that, yeah. So anyway, go, go ahead with what you were saying. Yeah. And, and, and after I, after I figured out, Kind of how to like pay attention to it it was it was awesome i loved um tris is amazing i love how like tactful mm -hmm. she is you know she's like this little like kind of innocent girl but she's also like kind of a ninja because she can <laughs> be a badass like she can kind of know, feisty yeah feisty do some really cool stuff um and yeah the story i love being out in the water learning about the spores was really cool too yeah um because I, I have never heard of aether or anything like that before and so i was like what a cool concept to have this like ocean of sand you know, being fluidized by eras, like that's super cool. Yeah. Um, and then everything else, you know, kind of the love story, the journey to get to the wicked witch and all the yeah. sorceress and all that yeah. stuff. 
it was it was just really good i really yeah. really enjoyed it it was a super fun read it was short and sweet um which i think was perfect for me at the time so yeah same you know. Yeah, it was a it was a great cozy kind of yeah exactly kind of story. Sure. It just yep. felt like kind of you know sitting down with a blanket yeah. and kind yes. of mm -hmm. getting into it. Uh, what did you think, Cheyenne? Yeah, I love this. I really like Brandon experimenting with style, and I mean, as I said, it's different from his usual third person limited. This is Hoyt narrating. Yeah, which makes me even more excited for Dragon Steel because Dragon Steel is Hoyt's backstory. Um, oh, 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 wow, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, oh my god. There's so, yeah, I didn't even know Dragon the Steel name is it. like five different things. Dragon Steel is Hoyt's backstory. Dragon Steel is Brandon's company. Dragon Steel is the medal that comes from the dragon that we see in this book. Oh, Dragon Steel is the convention. Dragon Steel is so many. Well, yeah, yeah. It's like five disambiguation pages on the on the cover <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know that his backstory had a name. I I, I had mm -hmm. known that uh, in the afterward, Brandon had said. You know, this is kind of my my test run for doing a Hoyt yes. backstory and for doing it in this style. And that made me very excited. I was like, because the mm -hmm. whole time I was reading this, I was like, Hoyt is so funny and so witty and just like explains mm -hmm. things in such a great way. I'm like, I want so many more stories. Yeah told to us by Hoyd um, and then to find out that we're getting his backstory narrated by Hoyd I was like oh this is going to be great and like technically I don't even know really who Hoyd is yet I like I, I I know I know that he's like a world hopper and that he appears in every Cosmere book or almost every Cosmere book and uh you know I I know that much but having not gotten to Stormlight like I I don't know much beyond you that don't, you don't learn Hoyt is a bigger character in Stormlight. You don't learn all that much about Hoyt in Stormlight, except in the oh, okay. letters, like in some of the epigraphs. Okay. Most of what we know about Hoyt comes from words of Brandon and a little bit of context. Okay. When Brandon did his uh, MFA in creative writing, his master's thesis was the book he wrote that year, which is Dragonsteel Prime. You can still find it at the BYU library, though there are a whole bunch of conditions to get it. And this year, with the words of Radiance kickstarter he's going to release it just like he released way of king's prime obviously this is old brandon it has mistakes and it's and then you have like liar of pardonal another one of brandon's old stories and they're both hoid stories in the shattering and all that okay and so and th those aren't canon anymore unpublished but brandon eventually is going to like write it properly make them canon and yeah it's other than year of four Dragonsteel is endgame Cosmere. It's the last thing we're getting before we were four, presumably. Okay. Things can change between now and then. Like, we got these secret projects. Um, but so, it's Hoyt's backstory to the story of the shattering of Adonalsium and the shards and see, the I don't answer think, to all these questions we've had. I don't, I don't think I even know what the, the shattering is, I'll, like I'll, what, that, what that's you, referencing or anything. Yeah. We'll so, talk about it because you have it in the notes and I'll explain okay. Okay, Perfect. cool. Um, and uh, just to clarify a few things for anybody who's uh, new to the Cosmere or anything, I, I think I know what you mean, but just for clarity. Uh, so Way of Kings Prime, that is a book that he released somewhat recently, right? That is like uh, Way of Kings with more, you know, additions and stuff. Yeah, so Brandon... Um... Like he had this phase when everyone was telling him be George Martin, and he yeah. tried that and he failed miserably. That's where Mistborn and Final Empire Prime are from. It was a lot darker. It just wasn't working. Oh, did they have a Prime and then, too? I yeah, th those aren't those haven't been released. I mean, I okay. think some people have read them, but Brandon doesn't like to. He okay. will eventually release them as curiosities, I think. So they're from like his later era of books, but then he. Basically, what he said was, you know what? I'm not going to care about what people are telling me. I'm going to write this ginormous book with like 10 magic systems and not care. Yeah. By this point, he had, it was just before he sold Elantris. And he wrote this thing and, and it was like, it's pretty different. It's Way of <laughs> Kings before it got revised, right? Like it was like, yes. it's essentially yeah, like this was his back first in 2002. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Um, Canon Way of Kings was released 2010. Uh, okay. Um, 
yeah so so, so this is like yeah. the un this is like the rough version of way of kings is way of kings for it's, us. it's it's not even a first draft way of kings okay it's, completely different i mean wow. Taln and yasna are pov characters kaladin was named differently um the magic system wasn't there were no spren okay uh, things that are gonna be nothing to you guys because you haven't yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah um but you'll yeah you'll probably go back to this and be like oh it's completely different story it was much darker okay um so, and so it's then, kind of a mess as a story because it has way too much to do. Right, right. And Brandon was like, you know, I don't have the skills to write this now. And so he tabled it. And after he wrote The Wheel of Time, he was like, okay, um, like now's the time. Because The Wheel of Time had let him gain those skills to balance such a large POV cast right. like Stormlight has. And I mean, things with pacing and... And so yeah. he built it again from the ground up. Um, okay. And that's what we know of the Way of Kings today. Cool. So, uh, and then the other thing you mentioned is Word of Brandon. And and I know what <laughs> yeah, this I guess means. I should because, explain that. Yeah, because Dresden Files has Word of Jim. And from, mm -hmm. you know, I would assume they're the same. Uh, and basically this mm -hmm. is any little tidbits that Brandon has been asked mm -hmm. in like AMAs or, you know, any, any sort of like expos that he's gone to or anything, uh, just little world building yeah. elements where people have said like, Hey, what does this mean? And he's given a good answer to it. That kind of goes into this word of Brandon mm -hmm. thing where, you know, it's, it's not in the books, but he's said it right. I, yes. I would just, that, that's how it is for word of Jim. Mm -hmm. So I would assume they're the same. Yeah, I think with Brandon it goes a bit further than that. And he inherited this from Robert Jordan, where there's a whole database, uh, <laughs> yeah. like Theory Land, where it's Arcanum, uh, Wob dot Copper Mine dot net, and they, we've been storing their things there since like 2002. Um, thing, there's some really old like his blog posts back when he was on Time Wasters Guide, and almost any uh, question people have asked. Now it's harder because you can't record them anymore. But every single event Brandon went to, people would record uh, those oh. um, spoiler Q and A's when there were like signing lines. Somebody okay. would like place a recording, like <laughs> people would ask questions, and they'd all get uploaded onto the database. And there's some more famous than others. The Hoboken signing, the, the audio for that is terrible. It's, it's basically paraphrased, and there are okay. lots of like wob things that you don't have to know them all because it's impossible to know them all there are yeah. some people that are really good at it like ian yeah. from the 17 shard a uh, weary writer he knows so many of them nice um okay. but they don't have the same level of canon as the books and brandon has changed his mind about things oh okay Interesting. Uh, and but they're still all there and you can go reference them like for example he's changed his mind about the plot of euro 3 for like a million times like, oh, okay what the characters and the structure is going to be okay um but it's all there and any readings he does and nowadays the spoiler streams almost everything okay, ends up cool. there so you can look at it and then you have rafo which i guess i should mention once all. it stands read for read and out. find out <laughs> uh inherited from robert jordan yeah yeah that's basically what he says when he doesn't want to mm -hmm. answer a question <laughs> or, or can't find... or can't yeah yeah um, all right, so we got to move along, uh, but my initial impressions are obviously I I loved it. I thought that this was such an incredibly good book. Like, I don't know, like, I don't, I don't think that it would make its way into like my top five for the year or anything, but I'm like, it's all around. It's a, a perfect book in my opinion. Like there was there was no point in the book where I was like bored. I was always interested in, you know, what's happening next or the things that we're finding out and all the characters were super lovable. Um, it was just like a really, really fantastic, uh, fantastic book. And it's definitely landed a spot on my reread several times list. <laughs> Uh, along with things like Kings of the Wild. Like that's just a book that I could reread over and over and never get bored of it. 
Um, so this has definitely earned its spot. Uh, I've listened to it twice now. I enjoyed it just as much, if not more, the second time. Um, I loved, uh, I talked about this a little bit, but I loved Hoyd narrating the story. Um, it was just like, I don't know. It was so great. Like, I love the way that this is like read to us, like it's a storybook or like it's a, like it's a story he's telling personally to us. Yep. Um, and then also how funny he is. He's so funny. This book made me laugh out loud so many times. Yeah. And I love how he's like kind of trapped in his mind. Like you'll hear yeah. like, like Hoyd talking, but then he'll say some crap. Like, you know, you, you have a couple quotes that we'll wait for, but it'll just say some wacky zany crap to it just walks away yeah 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 and then we get this uh we get the afterword by brandon there was some interesting uh tidbits here um he looks like he wrote this book for just him and his wife initially uh and then she told him later uh after after she read it she's like you need to you need to publish this and the, you know so he uh he decided to make it into a, a canon book of the series um, and I, I love that idea. Like, what a great way, like an author just, you know, just writing a book for his wife. Like, what an incredible That's gift. That's pretty like, cool. Yeah. Like, I, I literally wrote this for you. It's a whole ass book. I think that's fantastic. That is pretty cool. I agree. Yeah. So um, that's a good project. Brandon's breaks from writing are always more writing. He wrote uh, most of Warbreaker on his honeymoon. He wrote Emperor Soul after, I think, during a vacation to Korea, maybe? Oh, wow. Or after his mission or something like that. But it's uh, related to that. Brandon's breaks from writing are always more writing. Yeah. <laughs> Just completely different tone, completely um, like narration sometimes. This is why we have things like The Rhythmatist or Alcatraz or Skyward. Yeah. Just because Brandon needs to switch things up from super dense Stormlight books or Mistborn books. Right. And since he wasn't touring in 2020 and 2021 because of the pandemic, he had a ton more time. And he explains this in his video where he reveals yeah. a secret project and all this. And that's where these secret projects came from. And he wrote them initially for Emily. And the funniest thing with all this is that he, one day he just like, he printed the files and he left all four of them that's right a, yeah somewhere in cosmere house yeah. people have no idea they were different yeah and they just came and took them and they're like well, wait this is like five diff four different stories yeah and they did the same thing with the beta reader i'm not a beta reader but i know lots of people because of the 17th shard and like part of what they say is peter king who's like okay who wants to beta read a cosmere story um it's like 100k words long whatever yeah. And the emails went out. And they made sure specifically to um, give different files to the couples in the beta group that are married or live together and all that. Oh. So, for example, um, uh, Drew got Secret Project 2 and his wife Lauren got Tress. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> so people started reading them and there was like the beta chat on Facebook and like the 17 chart has an, like the betas have their chat. They start talking about them. It's like, wait, this is different. Oh, wow. <laughs> and they were so confused. Yeah. Um, and so they finally at, figured at, things out and read the other secret projects. Because at that point, nobody knew that there was four books. They thought he was just sending out yeah. this one book for beta reading. That's that's really awesome. Yeah, that, that whole thing was wild. That was definitely like a... Brandon Sanderson broke the internet moment where he puts out this video and he's like, I wrote a book in secret and he puts it on the table. He's like, actually, I wrote another book in secret and puts that on the table. Uh, and then before you know it, there's like four books. Um, and like the hits just kept coming with yep. uh, with that. He's like, we're we're doing a Kickstarter. Oh, and then, no, the Kickstarter then he reveals the the Pro the prologue for Storm Light Fantasy like has this yeah. video of an end to secrets, and then he's like, "Wait, one last secret." The prologue of Storm Light Fantasy, and he sits down and reads the prologue to Storm Light Five, which is absolutely insane, and I can't <laughs> tell you why it's so crazy. Yeah, but it led credence to some theories. It has things that nobody was expecting, and it was the prologue that everybody wanted. So, yeah, Storm Light, each prologue is a different POV. The night, uh, Gavilar dies. This is Gavilar's prologue. 
And so it's insanity. Spencer's like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know. I don't know what that either. means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you'll yeah. see when you get there. But uh, Gavler, like the king of Alethkar, like his death kickstarts the whole plot. Okay. Each prologue is a different POV than I that. <laughs> oh. And this is finally we getting his POV. Yeah. How things went down. It, it, the prologue is insanity. And so, like, so, and we had to see the spoiler streams. And all these things, Brendan broke our minds. We weren't prepared for yeah. this. Yeah, um, yeah. I uh... we were just kind of struggling on the seventy show. Like Brendan, you were giving us too many things to do. How are we gonna have those spoiler periods? Yeah. Um, like shard cast because there's so much to do. There were like so many weeks that we recorded like Saturday and Sunday just yeah. to get everything out. Yeah. It that it was it was all pretty wild i i didn't keep up with a lot of the uh the extra stuff there but just to see like uh him do the kickstarter and then all of a sudden the kickstarter was at 42 million and he like broke world <laughs> records for kickstarter like that that he was just the world absolute, record, actually. oh my god it was so wild it was just such a that that was the moment where like like everybody knows who brandon sanderson is there was like random mm -hmm. magazines writing articles about him and it, it was it was pretty wild um but going back to this this afterward here um you know he mentioned that he introduces uh aethers uh in this book that show up in the cosmere and other places and he says something that i very much agree with he says that he was going for a fairy tale adjacent story, uh, and he took inspiration from books like uh, The Princess Bride and Good Omens. Um, and as mm -hmm. soon as I started this book, I immediately was like, oh, it's like a fairy tale. And it just felt mm -hmm. so like uh, so storybook and so fairy tale like. Um, I'm like, you know, that that's a perfect way to describe this book. Even like some of the story beats in this book were very much like, yeah, it feels like something that would be in a storybook. It feels like something that would be kind of fairy tale. Like when the captain and Tress went before the dragon and they had to convince oh. it. Like, who yeah, the, that was awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, that was very like fairy tale like I thought. Oh, um, <laughs> I just find it funny because you're like, okay, dragons fairy tale. We've been waiting for dragons to show up in the Cosmere. Oh, forever. really? Oh, is okay. this like the first time? Yep. For oh, wow. Technically, oh, but cool. yes, first canonical time a dragon shows up in the form of a dragon because Cosmere dragons are shapeshifters. Oh, okay. First time we get the word dragon steal, as in not the company, the cod, all these other things that the dragon steel is. Okay, I just um, assumed has, there was a, dragons there's in a Stormlight. Lot. Kind of. <laughs> you could pick it up if you put things together, but no, right. not really. All right, so let's see. What else do I have here? Uh, I liked the initial secret cover more than the one that they ended up with. Uh, I liked the one that is behind Gabe right now more than what we ended up getting I, I don't know how'd you how'd you guys feel about it well I, I didn't know that there was and I didn't even see the original cover so so behind it me is is the original cover is okay, the original cool. cover yeah yeah, so, yeah I don't know I kind of like the Brendan site I kind of like the one that the one yeah, that he ended up with decided with yeah I, oh, I kind of okay. like the way that looks but the, the one behind me is cool too yeah what do you think Cheyenne I like both of them um, yeah I don't, I don't know. I, I'm. It is probably my favorite cover of the originals. Um. Did you get the physical books? I'm going to get them. I oh, okay. couldn't get them in the Kickstarter at the time, but oh, okay. I, I, I know I'm getting Tress. I'm most likely getting uh three and four. Nice. Yeah. I I don't want to name them just in case there's some people that don't want to know their names until they come. Right. Out. Right. Also. Since you guys are audiobook readers, now that we're on the art topic, have you seen the interior illustrations? No. no. Well, I haven't. Oh, awesome. my God. You... Wait, <laughs> I'm going to send them here in the chat. I want to see, yeah, I wanna, I wanna see those. your reactions as you uh, look at them. There are three pages of okay. art. And there's some smaller things, but these are the big pieces by Howard Lyon. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's crazy. 
I didn't picture Triss as blonde, but I guess that's what I get. The dragon looks cool. Where's the dragon? Oh, that must be Crow. Crow looks badass, dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's Crow. Yeah, that's awesome. Crow. Is the one of the last ones there? I'm assuming that's the Sorceress's Tower. Yeah, Sorceress Tower. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's amazing. So who who did the art? Do we know? Uh, Howard Lyon. Howard Lyon uh, okay. He's also done the portraits for the heralds in the end papers of Stormlight books. And also the actual paintings, like the oil paintings of the heralds. Cool. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Are hanging in Brandon's house. That stuff looks amazing. Well, in Cosmere house, not Brandon's house. They're different, but yeah. Dang, I Sweet. didn't even... I should have used some of these for our background. Yeah, I know, I didn't dude. Even know. Yeah, I think the I think the one with the dragon is probably my my favorite. A better deal. Yeah. It's titled. That's awesome. Yeah, that's super sick. So let's start off with, uh, I guess, kind of an easy question. What did we think of our characters in general, especially like the main ones, like uh, you know, Tress and Crow and uh, Charlie? Did, did you guys like these characters? I did, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I, I loved, and Spencer knows this about me, but I love it when when an animal is, is kind of personified, right? Talking yeah. rat, like a dog with human intelligence, whatever it may be, yeah. I always really latch onto that. So I loved the interactions yeah. between Huck <laughs> and Triss. I thought they were just amazing. Yeah. Um, And like Fort, Fort, mm -hmm. his name's Fort, right? Is Yes. Yes. Fort. So Fort's probably like one of my other favorite, favorite characters. I love the way mm -hmm. that he like, you know, uses little fancy magic board and types his words and stuff is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, bad guys, sorceress, I thought was awesome. Same with Crow. Great, great characters written. Yeah. Uh, and of course, Hoyd. So yeah, I was happy yeah. with all of them. Yeah, I yeah. I loved. Oh, good. Oh, this is, sorry. No, I really like all of them. Uh, Trust Charlie slash Huck. I really yeah. like Hoyd and getting to know more about him because like, you guys say you don't know too much about Hoyd because you haven't read Stormlight. There really isn't all that much like, to know. Yes, Hoyd is a bigger character in Stormlight. Um, I mean, he like, has uh, wit and you, he plays a bigger part and you have the letters. And then in Rhythm of War, he's a much bigger character than the other books. But we still don't know too much about Hoyd. And Hoyd has masks behind masks behind masks behind masks. He is a complete. He is such a mystery. Um, nice. Part of why everybody's so excited for Dragon Steel. Yeah. And so I felt, and I talk about this more on the Shardcast episode, I, that this kind of gave us like a, a first like, genuine look at Hoyd as a person, mm -hmm. instead of this persona that he presents, because I mean he's barely in Mistborn. Um, I mean he's a beggar and then an informant, and. In era two, he's like Wax's coachman, but he barely shows up and he's pulling the strings behind yeah. the scenes. If you don't know what you're looking for, you won't see him in Elaine Trist either. And if, I mean, he if... shows up in one scene in Warbreaker and that's it. Oh, okay. Yeah, where so, where was he in Elantris? Uh, He's one of the beggars that helps Serene, uh, oh, like okay. transport things into... Um, oh, interesting. And then in the 10th anniversary edition, which we'll get to when we talk about magic and world building stuff, uh, there's an epi epilogue, I guess, with him uh, talking to one of the Skazy and he's like, oh, well, I can't get, like, oh, he wasn't able to get the Elantrian magic. He's been wanting Elantrian magic since the first book in the Cosmere. Well, I guess White Sand is first um, timeline wise, but basically the first book in the Cosmere. And this is far future Cosmere, so it's been yeah. Ages. So that's that's the other interesting um, yeah. thing that I'm I'm super excited to get into is this is obviously not any sort of age that we've seen so far in any of the Mistborn books or Warbreaker or anything like that. Uh, so we'll definitely get into that when we get into uh, world building. Um, as far as the characters, I think. Uh, I mean, Tress has got to be my favorite. Like, I just, I love mm -hmm. Tress. Uh, Charlie was so much fun, especially, you know, at the beginning where we get to see him a little bit more yep. in, in his natural form. Um, you know, he's just like this. Uh, I, I, I'm always a sucker for the nobility that doesn't really care about being nobility and they just want to be like a normal person. 
Um, and so I, I really enjoyed his character. Uh, Crow, I don't know. I, I think she was a good villain, but she didn't have a lot of depth, at least not like initially. Like she had like a whole reason for what she was doing that I enjoyed like finding out little by little. Um, but you know, then, then we get to see the sorceress and that was, that was a really, really good villain. Um, yeah. And then Ulan, the, the Chandra, that was, uh, um, yeah. that was like, he was so good. Like it, it took yeah. me a little bit, but I finally realized that he was a Chandra after he was talking about like cutting off mm-hmm. body parts and putting them back on. I was like, I caught on. Yeah. I, so, yeah, okay. I caught on pretty quick. I think. Cause he was talking May about I how- blow your mind. Ulam is mentioned in the Lost Metal. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, so in-, in I, it probably I think it's um Melan's epilogue. He's like, oh, Tensuna and Ulam told me that the thing with Wayne wasn't gonna work out, and all this. Oh. I caught on like pretty early on because of the name, because most Chandra names have like the same structure, and so I had my suspicions, and then. I just kept confirming. I was like, oh, yeah, Condra. So here, here, yeah. I, have a, I have a question for you, Cheyenne. How, so I, I don't know if there's even a way to tell this, but like chronologically, like, is there like a time frame that we know? Like, is this 100 years, 1,000 years? Yeah. I mean, we don't know exactly when yeah. it's set, but Brandon, and he, Brandon blew our minds about this in one of the Secret Project streams because everybody has assumed, okay, Trez is pretty already caused me or like Elaine Trez missed more times now. I mean, with the uh, uh, preview chapters, you know, yeah. because the technology and it's kind of like a backwater planet. It's like way Brandon is like, no, it's way like all the secret projects. Well, the Cosmere secret projects are all way in the future. Oh, interesting. So, and it's okay. pretty obvious, particularly with secret project four, that it's way in the future. And uh, secret project three, I mean, it's also like 80s ish tech. It's like, okay, yeah. But nobody expected oh, that so for Tress. Wait, oh, Secret Project what is 80s tech? Uh, or, Secret said. Project 3, three. is, um, yeah, it, I mean, it's like a very like urban setting. Oh, interesting. For one of the two. It's like based on like Tokyo and like anime stuff. Okay, cool. There's, so... there's, there's times in this book where like Hoyd, I, I think it's when... It was, yeah, had to have been Hoyd goes into the sorceress's chamber or her tower and he like looks, he's like, oh, well, she's on her laptop. Oh, laptop. And then he's yeah. like, oh, I mean, she's on her magical tablet or whatever right. else. And I'm like, yeah. that's, you know, kind of a little insight yeah. into how, yeah. Yeah. So Cosmere timeline goes, I mean, Dragonsteel, which we haven't read, uh, White Sand, Elantris, and Brendan is probably going to move Elantris when he gets into writing the sequels when he's working on Era 3. Okay. because it, they're going it, they're going because of lost metal stuff they're, it, it's going to need to be moved closer to mistborn oh, okay uh mistborn era one stormlight mistborn era two oh. i'm not sure when um i didn't know era now, two shadows for silence i'm not sure exactly when it's set, but it should be like around stormlight time like maybe a little bit before yeah era two is between the first half of stormlight and the back half of stormlight and that's part of why I mean, there's some things there that you're going to notice in the letters, like Cosmere references that are going to click. It's like, oh, yeah, obviously. Right. This is. And there's some things that they mention in Era 2 um, in Lost Metal. It's like, Groshar has been locked off. And I don't like the, all these bunch of things. Are like, wait, what happens in Stormlight 5? <laughs> right. You know, because it came out. But obviously, those events are happening after. So it's like, wait, what happened here? Um, yeah. And. I mean, then it's like the nebulous time when these are set. Okay. I mean, Six of the Dusk and all uh, these secret projects should be around the same time. And the laptop thing, like when Hoyt is talking to its audience, theories go and it seems pretty plausible that it's someone from First of the Sun because it has a couple of references that are super specific to things we see in that story. Okay. Um, is First of the Sun a short story? Yes. I mean, First of the Sun is the planet. Six of the Dusk is the short story. It's in Arcanum Abounded. Oh, okay. Got it. All right. So, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll go more into that when we get into world building. Mm-hmm. Let's go straight into our favorite moments and quotes. Uh, I'll start this one off. 
the beginning and the ending were my favorite parts because I feel like the beginning was just like so charming and you're getting to know like these kind of weird and quirky characters. And it's, I, I think like the beginning was like the funniest part of the book. Uh, mm-hmm. And then, and then the ending was like the Sander Lanch where it's like, guess Sander what? Lanch. <laughs> yeah. It's it like, is a thing. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. Sa- Sander Lanch is basically what the fans call like something like the end of a, uh, Mistborn book three yeah. uh, hero mm-hmm. of ages yeah. where just yeah. like everything is getting revealed yep. and uh and so like the end of this book it's like guess what you're way in the future <laughs> guess what like charlie is the rat like you know there's there's spaceships and laptops and all like oh it's just like all this stuff like one after another i absolutely love mm-hmm. that and i i just loved all these little twists and turns that we got all throughout the book um and it was really like like the big one was like at the end but all throughout the book we were getting like little twists and little reveals and finding out about the captain's plan and just like little Mm -hmm. things like that different things that spores can get used for and i just love like Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i loved how it kept up your interest the entire way through there was always something new to learn there was always something new that you're trying to figure out i I just really enjoyed that gabe any favorite moments yeah so i i really enjoyed any parts uh following ulam like tris talking to him on the ship any anything that he did was always like probably the most maybe not funniest, but like the most like intriguing points to me in the sense of like, he's just kind of crazy, you know, like he's like this cannibal that can like, he's got an ear on his inner thigh, like, and, and he's always just like super, he's like, well, I have two here. Why, I can't fit another ear here. That's why I yeah. put it down here. Crap like that. Yeah. I was just, I don't know. I thought that was cool. Yeah. Um, And when the first scene where I was like, oh shit, we're fucked was when Tress was stowaway in one of the barrels and the inspector comes up and I was like, I was like, oh, is she going to get it? And she walks past it, turns around and hits the thing. I'm like, oh, God, she knows, she knows. Turns out <laughs> she was that inspector, which is super right. cool. Yeah, that was super fun. Yeah, yeah. I, I really enjoyed that. And and that just goes to show, like, the wit that she has. She's very witty and, like, cunning and mm-hmm. thinks things out thoroughly before she does them. Yeah. And the, the scene with, like, her dad and her mom talking about, like, you know, she said, I want to go rescue Charlie. And they're talking about it. And then their dad's like, well, wh- why... I mean, like, is our daughter, like, not thoughtful? Mom's like, no, she's very thoughtful. Is her daughter not this blah, blah, blah? So on, so on and so forth. And they finally realized, like, yeah, she's she's probably got a handle on this. Like, if she yeah. wants to go do it, she can probably make it happen. Yeah, I loved, I loved how it was said, like, it, there's so many little, like, I don't know, just, like, kind of subtle, not digs, but, like, just, like, at other fantasy, oh. like, tropes. And he was like... Mm-hmm. He's like more, uh, more of the heroes in these sh- in these stories should really talk to their parents before they go out adventuring. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like, yeah. yeah, like you know, because in a lot of like fantasy books, like the parents aren't really involved in yeah. any of the young. Because we get books where we're following like 16, 17 year olds somewhere around there, yep. and it's like they just like leave home to go on this adventure. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, did nobody like question them? And so I, I love that kind of like dig at that trope. I thought that was really funny. Yeah. And Hoyt inherently, Hoyt is a storyteller. Um, and I love him talking about storytelling. And he always has this, well, almost always has this big monologue about storytelling at the end of every Stormlight book in the epilogues. Okay. Every epilogue is a Hoyt POV. Oh, nice. And... So I love getting more of it here, uh, like life advice. And also Brandon's digs at the fandom. He's like, uh, steal an iron for those who compulsively keep yeah. track of those. Like, that was <laughs> definitely <laughs> directed at us, yeah. particularly in the 17th chart, because we right. pour over those details. Uh, <laughs> so that was really funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I really like how Brandon is like subverting tropes, not only in Oak. Oh, now, well, it's the girl that's going to rescue the guy, but in so many other ways in the way Tress acts. Yeah. In- yeah. The choices she makes in the structure of the story itself. Yeah, it definitely reveals. it sets it aside from most other fairy tales, mm-hmm. you know. Right. Different kind of way of doing it, which is cool. Yeah. 
Uh, a lot of my favorite moments are actually quotes because I feel like, I don't know, it was, it was interesting because like a lot happened in this book, but I don't have like a lot of like specific scenes where I'm like, oh, I really like when they did this or when they did this, like besides the ending. But a lot of these quotes like fit that same kind of thing that I look for. Um, and my first one here is, uh, Tress was normal. This is a paraphrase. Uh, Tress was normal. All the other girls mentioned how they weren't like everyone else. They were all so unique, in fact, or yeah, they were they were so good at it, in fact, that they all did it together. And I, I love this dig, I, another yeah. dig at a trope where the girl that's like, I'm not like other girls. girls. And it's yeah. like, it's like Tress was like everybody else. She was completely normal. And it was all the other girls that were like, I'm not like other girls. But yeah. because they were all doing it, they were all the same. And so they weren't really like other yeah. girls. Yeah. It's, I, I just love, I love that little dig mm -hmm. there. It was so good. Um, and then it was mentioned a couple times uh, how <laughs> I, so I think, the first one was uh, Charlie talking about it. And then the next one was Hoyd talking about it. But they, they mentioned a couple times how princesses resuscitate frogs <laughs> because they're always like kissing a frog yeah. in a story <laughs> yeah. to turn it into. And I just love that, like, I guess, play on words there where most princesses <laughs> are resuscitating amphibians. Yeah. Um, that was super great. And then real quick, the, the next quote that, legitimately made me laugh out loud like actually laugh super loud was when um charlie leaves on the ship in the beginning <laughs> and he tells her like you know i'm gonna be you know boring them to death to get us to move on to the next place and i'll send you a letter and a cup every time we move on and she receives a letter saying that uh you know how he's boring some of these women and just talking about these really mundane things and then uh one of them was something about his uh toenail clippings yeah. and uh and so she like reads it and she says fight on my loquacious love be, <laughs> be brave my mildly gross warrior uh, and I I the word loquacious <laughs> Um, I love so that the word loquacious is a word and I didn't notice that this it was Argent who pointed it out trust I mean loquacious is a pretty specific like big word term like all these things she only uses it in reference to Charlie and to Huck and then oh, one of the things that's tipped some oh interesting, like, interesting. Was, yeah was, that's cool person. I did not catch that I didn't even realize she said it more I than once <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't pick up on it either and it took me a while to pick up on uh, that's cool what does loquacious thing. even mean dude i don't even know what that means um like i mean that they like the like words just, and that they talk a lot and like extravagant or it's one of, yeah oh, okay okay yeah that's good and then shortly after that there was this really great quote <laughs> <It's so dirty. laughs> uh he was he was six feet tall and had a jaw so straight it made other men question if they were. <laughs> yeah, I remember everybody that made me laugh that out loud. Uh, that's awesome. When the preview chapters came out, because yeah. if I'm not mistaken, that's the last chapter in the previews. Uh huh. And everybody was laughing so hard about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was a fantastic line. Oh yeah, the crazy things Hoyd says while he's cursed. Yes, those were some of my and, favorite. Dude, these moments were so great because you. <laughs> You essentially have two hoids in this book. You have yeah. the you have the hoid from the present day who is narrating this story to you, and then you have hoid in the story who's like living out his part in it. And the one in the story is cursed, and he just like they they've taken like his sense of uh, class away. He has no he has no tact. He has no discipline. He has nothing like that. Um, and so he's just saying like these crazy things and then Hoyd, the narrator will say, just forget I said that or yeah. something like that. <laughs> yeah. Like it's, yeah. it's so funny. And one of my favorite ones that he says is, uh, Tress is talking to him and they get to the end of their conversation and he's like, I, I need to go nibble on my feet for a bit. They taste like fate. Yeah. And I was just like, 
there what was does like, that mean? Yeah, there's one other one where he was like, he was okay, is about, fate like, capitalized? I don't remember. I we did the audiobook, so I don't know. Yeah, I don't know it, either. It, okay, it, gonna, it sounded like he capitalized up. it. It sounded like he sounded like something. It was hint, hint type yeah, thing, you know, right. for sure. Yeah. But then there's other ones where he talks. He's he's like he's like one time I I boiled my my coat and ate it. Yeah. Out of nowhere. Yeah. Just totally out of nowhere. Yeah. Okay, I have a couple other quotes here. Um, so this is, I forget when exactly in the book this is, but it's during kind of an emotional moment. Uh, and I think it's uh, Soleil. Was that was that her friend on the ship? Yeah. Um, it says, then she reached over and gave Tress a hug. It was exactly what Tress needed right then. When emotions start leaking, it's best to give the body a good squeeze and force them right on out, <laughs> like lancing a boil. And this is what I mean when I say, like, I love the way that Hoyd, like, thinks about things because, like, we're just, like, getting into his mind yep. here. And I just love, I love that, like, that's what he thinks of a hug. I don't know. I, like... When emotions start leaking out, it's best to give the body a good squeeze. Well, yeah, I mean, and it's the truth. Yeah. Like, he's absolutely yeah. right. It's exactly yeah. what people yeah. need, man. Yeah. And then he kind of goes on to talk about uh, how we as humans are, like, super fluid mm -hmm. in our in our personalities. Uh, and we kind of inhabit a certain shaped jug. And when we're not meant to fit that jug, we become like exhausted and depressed and anxious and it causes all these problems in our lives um and so how it's all about like finding the right jug to fit you basically i i just love that whole that whole thing where it's like if you like as your personality are like trying to fit into a container that is mm -hmm. not meant to you know fit you then yeah, you're going to have problems in your life. And I just love the way that that's kind of explained and, and uh, explored by, uh, by Hoyd. Um, what about you guys? Any other favorite moments, favorite quotes? My favorite stuff is all, is mostly Cosmic stuff. Like I, I love the story and I love stress, but obviously the first, the things that are going to stand out the most to me are like Cosmic reveals. And yeah. like, that's where you go like, wait, what? yeah um, so what were some of the what were some of the cosmere reveals you got only in this book where you said like whoa what I, i'm curious yeah so, like you probably won't be able to explain what they mean yeah just just just, like what just parts. the parts yeah, yeah just the parts like fort's tablet when they're like uh awakened predictive connection circuit or however it's called. oh okay yeah, I was yeah. like whoa okay <laughs> like, this has definitely changed from when um like awesome. we saw awakening and warbreaker cool um the dragon obviously we've been waiting for dragons yep. for yeah. ages they said the tablet was nelthy tech right yes okay so that that so that had to have come from a like a futuristic yeah. warbreaker society okay yeah you start thinking about the mechanics as like okay yeah connection and um identity and things like that it makes sense the way this works but at, at the time it's like because it was the first like big uh big cosmere thing like wait what yeah and there were right. a lot of more of these in the lost metal just because it was so different than it isn't as casual as it is here but uh -huh. yeah the dragon uh the aeons at the end and i mean a lot of the ether stuff i really enjoyed like i'll talk about it when we get to the lore section okay but i loved uh ether of night and i really like the magic system and s exploring how it's the same how it's changed yeah uh, some of those theories were really cool awesome what about you gabe any any other ones um not not really the part when you know tris was in the sorcerer's chamber and she was saying like like i beat you you know like kind of challenging her and then the, I think the sorceress, and correct me if I'm wrong, was getting ready to like throw a curse at Tress, and then Hoyt came in and put up a barrier of in, investiture. I think is what he said, or something of the sort. Yeah, right? you that's can... the scene that's illustrated. In... Yeah, and that, that was so. So that scene right there was cool because I was like, oh shit, what's gonna happen? And then Hoyt comes in with the shield and basically like kind of comes clutch and, yeah. and you know makes makes stuff happen. So yeah, I I love that moment where she's like. 
she's leaving with who she believes is Charlie and they're like leaving the castle and kind of like this whole moment where she's like, like I changed, but Charlie didn't. And she's like, I don't know, like if I feel the same about him, like now that I'm changed. Right. And, and so it, it seems like it's about to be a really bittersweet ending where it's like either the sorceress did something to Charlie to make him like really complacent. That's kind of what I thought. I, I thought that he like still had some sort of spell on him uh, that was making him all like weird. Cause you could definitely tell when, when they were on mm -hmm. the, when they were heading out of her chamber, like yeah. something's up with Charlie. Um, and, uh, and then just that moment where she's like, wait, this isn't Charlie. And so I'm thinking, oh, Charlie's dead. Sh crap. Like she oh. must have killed Charlie. And this is like some construction. I did not see Charlie being the rat. Like I, dude, I did not. I know, I know a lot of people did, but dude, I did not see that coming. Mm. And so when it was revealed that uh, Huck was Charlie, I was just like, what? <laughs> like jaw dropper oh, dude, dude it was such a good such a good moment uh oh my god and that was it, it was such a good moment on top of going yeah. into the sorceress's layer and seeing all this like technology and everything very like modern it's like wait what's going on like is this in mm -hmm. the future or what uh, and then the whole Charlie thing, like it was just such a good like one two punch. It was I want to mention one other part or parts that I liked um, was, was kind of Tris, like when they're out on the the oceans, the aether, whatever they're called, um, spores, spores, yeah. Mm -hmm. And 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 Tris is like, she, you know, she gets the job as the sprouter, right, yeah. on the ship. And so she starts thing. thinking it like very, very scientifically, very mathematically, like kind of in her head. And she starts figuring out ways to like defeat problems that nobody else has defeated. Yeah. Right. Like defeating the crimson spores, mm -hmm. raising her ship up on this thing. And like, I don't know. I just thought that was really cool that like this mm -hmm. again, another part where this girl's like wit and, and, and tact Cutting. comes into play. Yeah. She's just very, very You're gonna smart. You're going to like Nirvani a lot. Yeah. You read Stormlight. Okay. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I liked. Uh, I liked seeing her kind of like figure out all these different things. I. I didn't understand a lot of it, honestly. I. I. I don't think I've, because I'm reading through it a second time now. I don't think I've gotten to that part. And uh, the first. It's very time, like. Yeah. It's very like science. You know. Technical. It's, yeah. Technical. It's like kind of quid pro quo. You do. You know, you give a little bit of moisture to this spore and this happens. But if you also add this to it and give it this much water, it's like very just kind of laid out. Like if you know how yeah. it works, you could do some crazy stuff. But most right. people don't. They just know how to yeah. patch a hole in the ship or whatever right. else. Yeah, it, it was cool seeing all the uh, all the different spores. Yeah. Like some of them explode. Some of them grow vines. Yep. Um, and the, the midnight ones have like this bond mm -hmm. and, uh, I can't remember what some of the other ones did, but, um, yeah, it was, it was cool seeing all those. And I especially liked the, the planet as a whole, because it did remind me a lot of like what I read about in stormlight where like the planet itself is like a completely alien planet. Like it does not look like earth. Yeah. Uh like like in the Stormlight archive it's it's very obviously like not anything like Earth. There's all these weird <laughs> all these weird like uh you know flora and fauna and it's completely different. And and so then with this one, it, this one like I don't know. I I think this one might have even been more alien like with the the spore seas and mm -hmm. and all these different things i'm like man that's that's really cool I, oh I just really wait enjoyed. until you get to secret project four secret project four is insanity in terms of world ability it's like Ooh. that did actually <laughs> one of the crazy ideas that they bring up unintentionally blank you never think for case the idea behind Secret Project was like Brandon, how the world is this supposed to work? <laughs> but Brandon gets his ideas like a tidally locked planet or yeah. a planet with soft boots. And obviously, the physics for that are never going to work out, but it's fun. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, I don't know. 
I don't know what any of the other secret projects are. The only one that I do know is the one that uh, uh, Travis Baldry read uh, on his YouTube channel. It's the one, like, the little... The cover is like this little wizard guy, and he's got. A oh, gun. that's a good project too. That's yeah. a non Cosmere one, yeah. Right, yeah, and uh, that one that one sounds like a lot of fun. I, I think Gabe mm-hmm. is probably like you'll probably like that one more than you like this one, honestly. Like it's very, it's very like kind of Dresden Files zany, kind cool. of just weird and goofy, and yeah, it's it seems like a lot of fun. Awesome. Uh, it's and, the one I'm and least it's... excited about, but it's also not Cosmere, so. And it's kind of uh, it's kind of portal fantasy from what I yeah, yeah oh. it is portal fantasy. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, you'll probably like that. Yep, I will like that. Um, there was one thing that I wanted to drop in here because I thought it was really interesting. Um, we talk a lot on this channel about Patrick Rothfuss's prose and how he speaks in like this very like flowing and elegant and poetic Mm -hmm. prose that just kind of drifts along and you can just kind of follow it. And Brandon, I like, I am not like a particular fan of Brandon's prose, but I do like how he speaks more in ideas and like metaphors and stuff like that. Uh, So there's this moment where Tris realizes that she doesn't have to do all of this on her own. It's after the whole dragon thing. Um, and that other people can help and kind of comes to this realization. And she's wondering, like, why am I so astounded that, you know, other people can help me? Like, I, I just never really like thought about that before. And as Hoyt is kind of narrating, he says that sometimes when we're carrying around a load of bricks all the time, it can knock us off balance when somebody takes one of the bricks yeah. away to carry mm-hmm. for us. Yeah. And that was just a moment where I was like, wow, that's like, that's like a really good way to explain that Brandon. Yeah. Like that, that was just like, that was just like an excellent, like perfect mm-hmm. analogy. And, and I was like that, that's really cool. Yeah. And uh, another reason kind of for the way she was feeling is like, she up until that moment she hadn't really had anyone to tell or any like she like there's no reason why anybody on this ship really should help her uh and then she became the captain and they're like oh yeah we'll help you do this thing and so like i understand like she wasn't expecting anybody Mm -hmm. to help her she was expecting to like have to do this on her own uh she's kind of like this stowaway Uh, The captain doesn't really want her on the ship. And then she does want her on the ship for like these malicious purposes. And, and so she's, she's got to feel like nobody's going to help me. Like I'm all on my own here. Mm -hmm. And then when somebody does, it's like, Oh, wait a minute. This is weird. And I, I just love, I love the way he explained that. Yeah. It's also very much a Hoydism. Hoyd makes a lot of these comparisons Mm -hmm. of like life, with other things you'll notice in the stormlight epilogues okay. um, there's a lot of this so it's not always in brandon's books it's there sometimes but it's very definitely a hoyt thing yeah because he does this a lot okay yeah i i can't wait to uh to hear more from hoyt like that's i'm gonna look forward to that every single storm <laughs> or stormlight book yeah because he's like those this... epilogues are good this, this book has just completely sold me on Hoyt. I, I love him as a character. I have another quote from him that I really liked. Uh, I sat in chains while thinking of great <laughs> conversation starters like politics, religion, and your uncle's overtly racist views. <laughs> that, yep. that was that another was one where I laughed out loud. That was so funny um and then just tress i i just love how like weird mm-hmm. and like anxious she is yeah uh she anxious got up... is a great word to describe her very yeah. anxious <laughs> she got up clutching her cups for strength and spoke and i just picture like her cups being like her security blanket oh yeah oh yeah just like mm-hmm. like she's about to talk to the sorceress and she's got her cups damn it and, like i <laughs> I just love I can do uh, anything. Yeah, I I love the idea mm-hmm. of that. Yeah, there was this quote that just like completely floored me and like I had to pause the book for a minute and just be like, 
wow, like that was good. And it was, I've realized that it's okay to need help as long as you're the kind of person who deserves to be rescued. Mm. I was just like, wow, that, yeah. that was, that was good. And like, I may not like necessarily agree with that all the time, but I was like, that was just a fantastic way yeah. to, to put that into words. Uh, that, that was just really, really great. All right. So now, I mean, uh, unless anybody else has any favorite moments, we're going to go on to probably what Cheyenne is the most yeah. excited about. <laughs> um, so we'll be going into uh, world building, assuming you guys are good on favorite yep, moments. Yep, I'm solid. Yep. Um, all right, Cheyenne, Aether, what is this? Okay. So <laughs> She's ready. Go. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I can't wait. I'm excited. Aether is, uh, so way back, I mean, I've talked a little bit about some of Ren's and published stuff earlier in this episode. And one of those books with, was Aether of Night. This was when Brandon was first building the Cosmere. And most of that was actually uh, cannibalized into Mistborn. Um, oh. Like the Shardic part of that conflict turned into Ruin and Preservation. And there are a couple of other things. I mean, Aether of Night is a story of like mistaken identity. and But it's kind of weird because it's that plot. And then at the very end, there's like this ginormous Shardic plot that feels kind of out of place. It's like, whoa, wait. And so Brandon never published it, but I mean, most of the problems are really in the end there. And I love the characters and all this, but um, the magic system there was the Aethers. And so they're different than the way they work now, but they were uh, paired off. And so you had uh, Verdant and it, back then it was called Amberite, not Roselite. Oh, okay. And so like Verdant, like the one we see here yep. and Amberite, which is like, today's roseite kind of like what twin soul does in the lost metal but it like the magic system it's, it's it wasn't spores or the moons or anything like that it was more of like what twin soul does where the people get bonded to ethers and they can do things uh, with you... them and it's like different family lines that are related to like the different ethers okay so so you're and... like 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 captain crow like she's bonded to aether yes it okay. isn't parasitic it's more yeah. oh god i can't make this comparison because it's a stormlight comparison <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it's it's a bond it's a bond that they have yeah, with kind of these like twin spores souls. okay yeah they yeah. aren't they weren't spores um like they have either like the roseite crystal well the amberite crystal back then in like yep. their palms or the verdant like the, there was like a little vine around the wrist okay or um, then you had the other ones that like were midnight. Ferris and Bistarin. Uh, so Bistarin allowed users to, like, if they were injured or something, like, graft, like, animal skins or, like, animal parts, like, on them. Oh, and wow. And deal with that. And uh, so... Ferris, you had a couple of options. So you could turn into a corpate. That's, like, this big silvery thing that has, it can be used like, as a pillar and heating and like, structural support. Or the walkers that they're they do these like ginorm, ginormous like scalp like things that people like write on, oh, okay. or well the people or the nurturers that like take care of them and are always like next to like one of the corporates, like talking to them because these people have decided to become these uh, objects, and so yeah those are Ferris and Bistar and you have Amber and Verdant and then you have the more mysterious ones uh, Midnight and the Luminous. So Midnight, so our character in at the beginning of the book kind of gets infected. He has an Amberite Aether, and he gets kind of like infected and like accidentally bonded to Midnight. And the Midnight makes his Amberite stronger, but also has like teleportation powers. And there are these things called the Forgotten that are more like the Midnight you see now. They're these like black, <laughs> um, like shapes of people so they're like the main threat yeah in the book. so that's like kind of what we see in like in this in this one like the mm -hmm. kind of the black monsters and yeah. so so before yeah, exactly before this people. book like mm -hmm. how how different was it like was it pretty much completely changed like the powers that they gave you and stuff or or the, the abilities that you could get from one so aether most of them i mean the ones that have stayed are yeah. pretty similar yeah uh, like amber i slash rose verdant, verdant. Right. i okay. have no idea what's going to happen with ferris and bestarin because we only 
it, so in no, this book, what would what would Bastaran one, but... be? Would that be Midnight? No. Okay. It, it, it hasn't been mentioned. Okay. So uh, so then Midnight. Maybe it's one of the other seas, but I don't know if Brandon has kept it. Okay. Okay. So yeah, because I think I think Midnight is the only one we see in this one, right? The, well, we get Midnight, the Crimson one, and then Verdant, and I think that's it. But there's four, or they even said and... a fifth at some point. So what's so what's the difference between the spores and the aether? Because I thought like she was using red spores and like blue spores and stuff. Yeah. So the spores are different. Uh, Lumar, which is the name of the planet this takes place on, is a backwater planet, and the aethers have been transformed into these spores that, I mean, they work pretty. You compare it to the way Twinsel. Um, Works with the ether, and it's pretty different. Like, yes, you have the water thing, and it's basically the same ethers, but these are spores, and they're a lot more dangerous. And they come down from these moons that have the lunar grease, and they drop the spores like, in yeah. the seas on the planet, right? This isn't the core ether world. Wherever Twin Soul comes from is likely the core ether world. And you only say um, core, you're saying that's where like ether originates. Our, that's where yeah. it comes from. See, okay. The originates is complicated. Okay. You will, we, yeah. yeah, we don't need to get into an... Yeah, we, we really don't need to get <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, no no. Let's <laughs> let's let's stay let's stay streamlined here. Let's let's keep going down our yeah. our world building stuff. Yeah, because I, then you have uh, yeah. the thing of like, okay, maybe the there's predated Adonalsium and it's a whole can of worms that I don't want to get into. Yeah, see we don't we don't even confusing. know we don't even know what that means at all. So, so. Let's, let's just <laughs> Let's stay yeah. in our, our wheelhouse here. Uh, the other the other question I have is Hoyd, uh, he, so he's talking to us, I assume, unless it's meant to be narrated to somebody else. He mentions our world and our planet, and he even talks about like vending machines and spaceships and AI so- and all this stuff. I, from what I understood, our world is not in the Cosmere, but no, I don't not know. not at all. Okay. Like, one of the things that differentiates Cosmere books from non-Cosmere books is that, like, our world isn't part of the Cosmere. So, for example, in Skyward, they mention, like, Earth and, like, the culture and all that. Skyward is not part of the Cosmere. Same with Rhythmatist, Alcatraz, all the non-Cosmere books are somehow related to Earth. Cosmere, no Earth at all. Hoyt is just talking, I mean, this is far future Cosmere. Hoyt is just talking about places like Skadriel and oh, like, that have Cobain, those things, different things planets or different whatever mm-hmm. that have those various things. That have oh, those okay. things because yeah. technology has evolved. And for example, like Skadriel is like pretty similar to our own like technological level in terms right. of like timeline. So like you know how Miss Bornira Two is like late eighteen nineties, nineteen hundreds in tech. Then yeah. Era Two is gonna be like eighties tech and things like that. Cool. Um, and okay. so these things have presumably developed in the Cosmere somewhere. And so he's talking about them. And this is where I wanted to talk a little bit about to the audience. Because Hoyt makes some references to, oh, Linji that traveled the world without an AVR. Or lots of, like, ship ferrying. Um, yeah. Like, references. Like, uh, lots of, like, specific things that lead us to believe that he is talking to someone on First of the Sun. Uh, the planet from Six of the Dusk. With, like, in the story, I don't want to spoil it, but there are, there's like other people coming from other worlds with spaceships and maybe AI and stuff. Okay, um, so this is right a... before Miss Bonira Four, which is sci-fi. So right. So so he's talking to another planet that we haven't read yet. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. What is that planet? Because you you've read the short story, so like, what? Yes. Is that planet pretty similar to like Earth, or is it? Is there anything unique um, about it? Or? It has a bunch of islands uh, called the archipelago, uh, the Pantheon. Like, oh, okay. Um, and like all of these islands, they are really dangerous. Everything is trying to kill you on the mm. Pantheon. Uh, <laughs> um, nice. And there are these birds that have magic powers. And yeah, at the end of the book, there's spaceships. <laughs> Whole story. <laughs> all right. Okay, cool. And then we have the Six of the Dusk sequel that, uh, as of now, is uncanonical, but was a reading Brandon did at the Rhythm of War release, which has a bunch of crazy stuff. It's just, like, more confirmation of this is very, like, like, Hoyt is very likely talking to someone from this planet. Okay, oh. interesting. That's that's good to know, because, yeah, I wasn't sure if he was, like, supposed to be talking to, like, us on Earth. I was like, what? Because, yeah, I was sure that Earth wasn't in the Cosmere. 
so then I, I have some other notes here, um, but I I wanted to make sure that I gave credit for these notes to Bookborn because these are all from uh, her video that Gabe and I watched recently. Uh, I'll link it down below in the description because she went through and like really broke down a lot of it. Something that's kind of interesting that I learned for the first time, we, we see Silver protecting everyone from the effects of spores which is similar to what it does on other planets, I think. And aluminum protects spores from the effects of silver. Yeah. And aluminum is a protecting metal all across the Cosmere. Uh, and then same with like, um, she mentioned iron, steel and iron. And I don't remember this in, in Tress of the Emerald Sea, but she said that mm -hmm. steel and iron push and pull on, yep. on spores. Um, and so it's interesting to see how all these metals are similar all across the mm -hmm. Cosmere and they all do similar things, no matter what magic system you're in, mm -hmm. you can count on these metals kind of doing something in the, either the push and pull wheelhouse or the, you know, defending the, or whatever. Like, I, I think that's yeah. pretty cool that that's like standardized across the Cosmere. Yeah. Uh, the elementic metals and the element like the metals on that chart i mean they're everywhere and they do pretty much similar things there's a set of epigraphs in rhythm of war that talks about them in relations to fabrials um and we we're like oh <laughs> it was really funny because those were the epigraphs from the preview chapters for rhythm of war and everybody was like oh my god the misborn corrections and then the rest of the epigraphs like you basically forget about the first one because of how crazy the other ones are um but yeah they do pretty similar things now there's a difference between aluminum and silver and but when it comes like, oh, right, you guys haven't read Shadows for Silence in the Forest of Hell. Right. So that takes place on a planet called Threnody. And they have these like shades that are these like, like kind of like ghosts ish. They're cognitive shadows, but I don't want to get into yeah. those mechanics. Um, and shades are pretty dangerous. And you have like the rules like, don't like, like, don't spill blood, don't run at night, don't kindle fire, um, all these things. Okay. And, uh, people that live in the forest to help like protect their homes with silver because silver will keep the shades away and like the silver gets corroded like because the shades touch them and like the silver gets damaged yeah that's what she was talking about yeah she but was like that's exactly the same effect that it has here silver isn't in the elementic chart and so it's different than an aluminum aluminum blocks investiture silver can't pin it down exactly yet okay but it seems that ish similar to chromium, where like it takes investiture. Away. It doesn't take investiture away, but it renders these like the shades or the spores like inert. Like it kills the spores, and the mm. shades will turn away, or like you can heal a wound like inflicted by a shade with silver. Okay, um, and and chrom and chromium, chromium was what uh, Marisi had, right? No, the other one. I don't know which is um, cadmium. There's two. The one Cad the leechers. Yeah, Cadmium. I don't remember which is which, but one is the one the leechers use, the other one is the one Marasi uses. I'm talking about the one the leechers use. I mean, okay, it's, it's the... kind of similar, but again, oh, we God, can't really pin silver down because we only have two examples of it in the Cosmere. Yeah. Shadows for Silence and this. So. so so wait, remind me what Chromium does in Mistborn? Does anybody remember? Yeah, so I don't remember. I've, I'm forgetting which is which. I can look up the elementic chart like maybe. that's okay i was just curious so i so uh aluminum is what what cancels all the metals out in the stomach right yeah yeah okay and mm -hmm. then and then i remember that in mistborn there's cadmium and chromium yes okay. but i i also can't remember which does okay, which yeah. cadmium is the one is the pulsers that's what marasi is okay the, that's the time bubbles that slow things down yes right? okay and chromium yeah. are the leechers that like take investiture away from others. okay gotcha gotcha so gotcha. like a leecher will touch uh an elementor and yep, their pull all the... stores will be drained yeah yeah oh, yep. okay yeah 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 okay cool um so yeah and we can't really pin silver down again we only have two examples but gotcha so it our... somehow blocks investiture in a yeah. different way than aluminum does and you'll see you'll see aluminum showing up everywhere in the yeah Cosmere. i could see that in stormlight it's called ralkalest for example um so for example nightblood sheath it's made out of aluminum mm. okay so what was the what was the short story you mentioned something 
Uh, Shadows for Silence in the Forests of Hell. Yeah, are are we good to read that with what we? Yeah, read you totally so are. That's okay. Super standalone. It's so much fun. Okay, um, I've I've heard a lot of people like it. Yeah, I'll have yeah. To... Oh, I, I I love that episode we did on it. I'll have uh, to pick that office. up. So go going back to the uh, bookborn stuff, uh, we get mention of a wizard from the stars, and this is our first uh, kind of hint that people are flying around in spaceships. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is the, uh, the writing board for Fort. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this technology is said to be, uh, Nelthian in origin, uh, which is the, uh, Warbreaker world. Yep. Um, so yeah, I'm super, I, I can't wait until we get to this space age era of the Cosmere and see people from Warbreaker in like spaceships and stuff like that's going to be wild. Uh, then we get Hoyd saying, "I'm lit. I was literally involved in a plot to kill God," and it's like, "Holy shit! What happens?" Yeah, this is Dragon Steel. This is the story yeah. of Dragon Steel and the shattering of Adenalsium. So, what is Adenalsium if he was capital G God? That's a whole other question. Yeah, I'm gonna well, table I'm, that. Well, I'm I'm thinking he's talking about uh, Sazed. Nope. Because it gets mentioned earlier that Sazed released the Chondra. The con- yeah. Released the Chondra. Yeah, that's presumably some in some year of the three thing. Um, yeah, but no, he's talking about the shattering of Adenalsium. So Hoyd and sixteen other people, and maybe Frost was involved, but who knows? Hoyd and sixteen other people um, got together, and for some reason, we we don't. This is all lob information. Dragonsteel won't be written for decades to come. Um, they got together, and they're like, I don't know why, nobody knows why, um, they conceived this plan to split, or, you know, like, kill, however you want to call it, Adenalsium, that was this, like, big entity, um, and this happened on Yolin, which is, like, the original planet, if you want to call it, in the Cosmere. These 16 people became the shards. So we have Ruin, we have Preservation, we have... Um, some of the stormlight ones I'm not going to mention. We have endowment, uh, autonomy, Nalthus, autonomy, yeah, um, dominion, devotion, and I'm not going to mention the other ones because spoilers. Yeah. and you'll start finding out about those. What's the one? What's the one that's mentioned in the Lost Metal? Like Sazed becomes uh, like like there's the, the oh, mist, Discord, the re- Discord. Discord, yeah, yeah that's okay, it. yeah, okay. Discord isn't one. Oh, so Harmony and Discord aren't of the original sixteen shards. Oh. Okay. Those are just that happened because uh, says it took up ruin and preservation. Yeah, and so okay. right. Okay. It's like the balance and yeah, like shards can change their name ish. The mechanics that are complicated if things happen. Okay. Um, and I don't want to get too much into shardic mechanics because that's a ginormous yeah. conversation. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, Hoyt was Hoyt was actually offered a shard and he turned it down. Um, oh, I, I I assumed he had one. I I assumed nope. that's that's why he's no, immortal. No, Hoyt, Hoyt is immortal for a different reason. That's also a spoiler, and I can't get into. Okay, it's a it's Wob information. Right. But, oh, I see. Okay. Um, like when you finish Stormlight, if you want, like ask me and I'll, and I'll explain. Okay. Um, okay, I'll definitely do that. So I so I got this other one. Uh, Tress says, "Don't wake me up until Death himself, with nails in his mm-hmm. eyes, comes to get me." It's oh also yeah, in the Bookborn video has Marsh been world hopping? Because so, Marsh was referred to as mm-hmm. Death in Era Two, yeah. and yeah. he certainly got nails in his eyes. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know about Marsh world hopping because, like, we have no evidence of that. But in the Ars Arcanum for Lost Metal, uh, Chris mentions that tales of Marsh have been like spreading throughout the Cosmere. Um, but yeah, I don't know about Marsh actually uh, world hopping because nobody knows. But we do know that his legends have been getting off Skadrial and like traveling the Cosmere. Right, right. Yeah, I'm. I'm interested to. I like. I want to know so much more about like Marsh and Kelsier and what they're up to. And oh boy, I, I know. I, I I know there's some stuff in uh some Stormlight that'll mm-hmm. fill me in on a little bit of that. Uh, I don't know what it is, but I've been told that. Um, and so yeah, I. Oh yeah, I, you read Lost Metal before you read Stormlight. You know things that people that 
uh, I know, and know. and that's why, like, I was kind of bummed, honestly, because I'm like, oh, I bet this was like a big reveal in Stormlight. It's a ginormous reveal when, when uh, people saw Kelsier. Like, people would be. I mean, it's not exactly saw Kelsier. Out. It's more complicated than that. Okay, but. okay. <laughs> um, yeah, it's really funny because once I came back to uh, like watching Shardcast and things. Uh, probably one of the first videos I watched was the interview with Daniel Green post Rhythm of War, and they're okay. They're like, okay, spoilers, and immediately they're like, did you notice um, the reference to Kelsier? And yeah, it, it was a huge thing. I didn't notice when I read the book the first time because it's not super obvious. And then you just get Rhythm of War, um, Rhythm of War, Lost Metal, where you're just la- lounging around with the ghost buzz, you know? Yeah. Um. Okay. All right, well, we uh, we got to get close to wrapping this up here. The last thing I want to say in the world building thing is the sorceress is Elantrian, obviously. She uses uh, yes. uses aeons, um, and this is something, like, I cannot believe I didn't catch it in the moment. Uh, I, only, I only realized when uh, Bookborn mentioned it in her video. It's also in the like, illustration oh. uh, very clearly. So yeah. you were listening to audio. Yeah. That's, yeah. It's understandable. Um, yeah. So uh, Ryaina is part of an organization known as the Irie. They're in secret history. Um, like Kelsey interacts with them there. Oh my God, the Irie. <laughs> is, that that, is that that little cult that Kelsier finds yep. when he's walking around mm-hmm. as a ghost? Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those are the Irie. Um, the Irie are Elantrians from uh, before the magic broke. And they've been doing things in the Cosmere. Okay. Um. And yeah, Ryana is in secret history. Uh, Like, by name, she's there. Is she, like, a rogue? Or, like, was she sent by this cult to go just fuck with this world? We don't, we we don't know. Okay. Um, because it's so far in the future. Yeah. And secret history is, like, you know, one time. Gotcha. But, I mean, they do say that she just wanted to come to this planet to lord over people because she has technology, the magic, to just Mm. be the most powerful person. Awesome. Nice. So, as we wrap up here, we're going to kind of go into our final thoughts uh maybe a a couple a couple theories we don't really need answers to these they're just stuff that i want to kind of put out there uh first of all he used the word undulating (laughs) yes i noticed (laughs) so many times and i have to wonder if it was a murphy napier thing I have I mean, to Brandon wonder. I didn't know when he wrote this. Um, they just brought up the Murphy Napier thing. I think on last spoiler stream, but I, I, I some stream they were but, like undulating and like they told the story. Like, yeah, of Daniel's beef with Murphy. So I yeah. don't think he did this intentionally. Okay. Well. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting because I figured that he wrote this story initially for his wife and then kind of revised it, uh, and recently and uh and yeah, may have put it in. last year i yeah i don't know i think that's for for those that don't know murphy napier uh is a obviously a booktuber and she hates the word undulating <laughs> it's, it's become like this huge thing in the booktube community it's it gets really funny because uh daniel green will fire back with a bunch of videos that he says undulating a lot and she just hates it <laughs> Oh, and he um, hired um, what's his name? Oh, Sean Astin? yeah, yeah. He hired to Sean Aston to, to to call her and or to do the cameo and say undulating. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then there's this thing that um, that Hoyd says: everyone can use a little more wit in their life, except me. I could stand to lose a few pounds. And I don't know the specifics, but I I believe there's a character called Wit in Stormlight, right? Um, and and so I, I almost mm-hmm. wonder if this was like a reference to that so, character. I assume yeah. it is. Wit yeah. is Hoyd. It's one of his names. Hoyd has a million names. Oh, uh, the okay. dragon, for example, calls him Sephandrius. That's one of his names. Right, okay. Um, Sephandrius, Midius, Topaz, a Wit. He has a million names, and none of them are his real name. <laughs> um, yeah, Hoyt is wit. Okay. So this is definitely a reference to that. Okay, cool. Um, and then the last one I have here is there's a push for every pull, an old adversary of mine once said. Mm. Ooh. And so now I'm like, 
wait, are, are Kelsier, is Kelsier and Hoyd enemies? Are they adversaries? They very much are. They don't like each other at all. Uh, oh. You see it in Secret History. They they hate each other. Oh. And Hoyd isn't much oh, of a fan of them. Right. Well, either, as you see in Lost Metal. Uh, like, Moonlight is like, I don't know who's keeping an eye on who. Yeah. Um, yeah, Hoyt and Kelsier don't like each other at all. I um, forgot about that in Secret History when they're in the well. It's such the a well. funny interaction. Yeah. Oh, I totally spaced on that. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the last thing I have there. So do you guys have any uh, final thoughts? Anything that, uh, Gabe, if you're looking forward to anything in the Cosmere... Well, man, uh, that's a hard question to ask because just hearing Cheyenne talk about it, I am like fully invested. I know I yeah. like got a little bit overboard on the. No, episode. you're good. Really you're good. <laughs> Seriously, um, I, I, to explain like, things without context. No, it's yeah. good. It's good. But there's because there's I heard so much. Like, and even though I don't know, like I heard uh, you talking so much with knowledge, I'm like, dude, I need to figure out what is happening in this, dude. Like, yeah. I need to know. So right. I'm excited to continue on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll definitely have to do uh, Elantris next. Uh, we'll do an episode for that. We'll do an episode for Warbreaker. Because honestly, like, I remember that I loved Warbreaker, but I can't even remember, like, what the magic system is. So, like, I'll have to... Reread, I, yeah. I'll yeah, probably should do the same, too. It's used a couple too. of times in the yeah. reference, a couple of times here. Uh, the dragon, he, like, moves like fabric. It's Awakening. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they were awakening objects. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she would, she would be able to tell a rope or something. Yeah, to... grab things. Yeah, grab yeah. things. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's cool. Um, yeah. So, any any other final thoughts from you guys about about Tress of the Emerald Sea? Uh, no, not really. Just, I mean, if you want, we talk about it a lot in depth on the Shardcast episode. We're gonna be doing. World Hoppers episode eventually, uh, because okay. like Alf didn't back the Kickstarter, so we have to wait until uh, it yeah. becomes available to any everyone and she reads it. Um, but yeah, so you 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 can hear more of my thoughts there because they're different okay. types of conversations. Yeah, right. um, like yeah. Shortcast was very much deep dive, and we're very likely doing an Aether episode, uh, if we don't get the spoiler stream this week. Okay, cool. Sweet. This is gonna be our next episode, so. Okay. So so I, I do have a question real quick. So Secret Project 2 is non-Cosmere. Non-Cosmere. Mm-hmm. Uh, Secret Project 4 is meant to be read after you've read everything else. Uh, I mean, Stormlight, mostly. Okay. And then Secret Project 3, when is that supposed to be read? Do you know? Uh, when, as for when it's supposed to be read, I it also works. I mean, it's also a standalone. Okay. Um, I mean, it has one ginormous Cosmere uh, like bomb in the se- in the previews. Um, but you don't need any context to mm. uh, know but about that. So is, it, yeah. is, it, is, is that reveal from Stormlight? Is it from Mistborn or what? No, it's just its own thing. Um, oh, okay. I see. You know, I'm okay. If I don't know if you. Guys, I don't want to. I'm know. not going to tell you exactly what, what it is, <laughs> but it's it's related to something we talked about on this episode, like general Cosmere lore. Uh, I and... see. Okay, so it's its own thing. It's not going to spoil any mm-hmm. other books. It's not going to spoil anything else. Cool. Okay, that's all I need to know. Awesome. Um, okay, so again, where can people uh, follow you? Where can they check out your podcast? You you guys have a Twitter? Are you guys on yeah. Spotify? Yeah, anywhere you get your podcasts. Um, I mean, I our podcatcher just distributes to a lot of places. So yeah, Spotify, iTunes, Podcatcher, um, Stitcher, I think. YouTube is the one place we're not. Like we technically have a channel, but we haven't uploaded anything there. Yeah. Um, though okay. we might be doing uh, like a celebration live stream for like our two year anniversary, at some okay, point cool. in January. Sweet. Um, yeah. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, Discord. Um, yeah. Cool. Yeah, and any of our social medias is gonna have, uh, like the link tree with everything right. else. Oh, so and our we have stuff. our website at uh, World Toppers Podcast. Cool. And we have like information like about our guests and about us. Um, 
and like all the links to the episodes are like you can listen to them directly on the website for example cool it, it's got to be hard uh scheduling everybody for your podcast since you're all across yeah. the world you guys <laughs> it's are not in, like, as bad as it is different... for shortcast yeah Short, shortcast is worse um oh, okay because yeah. uh, sometimes we have to deal with people in the eu for shortcast yeah yeah yeah, it's crazy. Once you start dealing with people in like Australia, they're like a whole day and a half ahead or something. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> that hasn't happened to us. Uh, yeah. Our Australian member of Shardcast lives in the U.S. So, oh, we've, cool. We've had we've oh, had good. two Australians. We had uh, Ryan Cahill yep. and we had uh, Cam Wolf, and both times it was like, okay, we got to do the podcast at like nine in the morning so that it's like midnight for five, them five o'clock <laughs> yeah. over there yeah it's, yeah it's so weird it's such a weird thing to figure out <laughs> yeah uh all right cheyenne well thank you so much for joining us uh you're so knowledgeable about this stuff obviously you absolutely love the cosmere uh so we're super happy to uh learn as much as we can from you uh this was an excellent episode to do that on um and that is going to wrap us up there guys thank you everyone for hanging out with us while we discuss tress of the emerald sea we hope you'll join us on our journey through the cosmere we are super excited to join this community of fantasy readers mm -hmm. and hope that you will have a great time seeing our first reactions as we go through these for the first time uh, as always, we appreciate you hitting that subscribe button if you're here on YouTube. Uh, next week will be our small favor episode that we actually recorded in December, so it won't have the changes to the structure of the podcast. Um, and then we have another Creator's Corner with our good friend and audiobook narrator RJ Bailey after that. Uh, so we hope you will join us for that. It's going to be super, super fun. Thanks again for checking out this episode. And until next time, I need to go nibble on Gabe's toes. They taste <laughs> like fate. That was way better. Yeah. That was way yeah. better. <laughs> oh, man, that's awesome.